welcome to The Feast Life, where we empower you, the modern homeschool mom, to create a life and homeschool you love. One founded on faith, family, freedom, and fun. I'm your host, Julie Ross, creator of the award-winning homeschool curriculum, A Gentle Feast, and a certified Christian life coach. For more information on today's episode and to access my free gift for you, check out thefeastlife.me. Charlotte Mason once said, life should be all living, not a mere tedious passing of time. So on this show, we seek to savor the feast of life. Girl, grab your favorite beverage and pull up a chair. You are welcome at this table. Hello, welcome to The Feast Life. I'm your host, Julie Ross. I'm so excited to be here with you again today. Thank you so much for listening. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about being the hero your homeschool needs. Now, you might be thinking, Julie, a hero? Seriously? Most days, I feel like I'm some sort of wounded warrior, just limping across the finish line, collapsing, just being grateful to make it through the day. And I want you to know that if that describes you, that you are not alone. I spent years in my homeschooling journey feeling that way. Most days after school was over, I would collapse into my bed to take a nap because I felt so overwhelmed and exhausted and defeated and discouraged and like I was a failure. I want you to know that you're not alone. I also want you to know that you don't have to stay stuck there, that change is possible. And I'm going to be teaching you some things today, but throughout the whole rest of some of these episodes I have planned, we're going to be talking about these things because I don't want you to experience those things that I did. I want to share with you some of the the tools and the resources that I have used that have completely not only transformed my homeschool, but also have transformed my life. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you will notice that behind me, there is a (laughs) giant painting of Wonder Woman. So if you are just listening, you're just going to have to visualize it. Now, no, I did not put the Wonder Woman picture behind me just for this podcast episode. That's where Wonder Woman has stayed in my schoolroom slash office since I moved here. I put a picture of Wonder Woman up to remind me of how I want to show up in my homeschool every day. And one of the words that I chose was confident. I didn't feel confident. I was always questioning myself, always doubting myself, always wondering if I was like totally screwing up my children. (laughs) And I decided I didn't want to do that anymore, that I did want to show up. And so the Wonder Woman picture, isn't she cute? (laughs) Helps remind me of that when I am feeling defeated, when I am feeling discouraged to remind me that I have a choice. And I can choose to show up differently. And I'm going to share with some of that with you today. So first of all, I want us to think about what in literature is called the hero's journey. So in literature, there's an archetype of a hero. So think of one of your favorite kind of hero stories. So you have like the Lord of the Rings, right? And Frodo is taking the ring and has to throw it in the fire of Mordor. You have Harry Potter, Harry has has to defeat um, Voldemort. You have um, Pilgrim's Progress and Christian is on the journey to the Celestial City. The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, right? When the Pensieve children are on this mission to kill the White Witch. The hero's journey is found throughout lots of literature. So pick one as we go through this kind of example here. And I want you to think about what happens first in those stories. So first, the hero is called in those stories. Usually the hero is just going about their normal, ordinary, everyday life. They have no idea that they're a hero, that they have all this potential inside them. They're just kind of going through the motions. Most of them have really hard lives, which is kind of contrasts the journey that, of what they're going to become. And so at first, the hero gets called. Now, I don't know how you felt called to homeschool. I know a lot of people started homeschooling during the pandemic. I've talked to people who decided that they were going to homeschool because of pressure from their spouse or their family. Um, And some people just always knew that was my journey. When I had my first daughter, I was in a women's Bible study at my church and it met at the same day as a homeschool co-op. I had never heard of homeschooling before. I was a public um, school teacher. I was an education major. Like in Pennsylvania, I was totally not on my radar. I never heard of anybody being homeschooled. And I was at this co-op 
And my firstborn daughter had colic, so she cried all the time. So I would go to Bible study and within five minutes, they would come get me to come back to the nursery because my daughter was inconsolable. So I spent a lot of the Bible study in the nursery and the girls that were working in the nursery were homeschoolers, homeschool teenagers, and they were volunteering their time to work in the nursery so women in the church could go to Bible study. And so I spent a lot of time just talking to them. I wasn't that much older than them at the time. I was in my early 20s and um, I really just enjoyed them. And I remember thinking these girls are so mature, so articulate, just had such hearts for others. And I said, as I was holding my little baby there, you know, this is how I want her to grow up to be. I want her to be like these girls. Let me look more into this homeschooling thing. And so um, that was kind of the start of my calling. Also from being a former public school teacher, I knew that um, the kind of education I want to give, wanted to give to my children wasn't going to be possible um, in the constraints of a public edu educational system. I started to read more and discover more and felt more and more called to homeschool. So you might fall into many of those categories or maybe there was another way that you felt that you were called to homeschool, but at some point you were given a call of, hey, let's homeschool our kids and let's go on this grand adventure. So I want you to know that you were already on the hero's journey. You have already been called to this incredible adventure and journey called homeschooling. Now think of the hero, what do they do when they get called? Usually there's some sort of resistance. Like, I'm not really sure. I think you have the wrong person. I really could never do the thing that you are asking me to do. It reminds me of in the Bible when Moses is called in the um, burning bush. You know, he's, he gives God all kinds of excuses of why he can't do it, right? He's like, uh, I don't talk really well. Are the people going to listen to me? Yada, yada, yada. And finally, at one point, Moses just says to God, can you just ask somebody else? <laughs> Have you ever felt that? Like, am I really called to this homeschool journey? Like, can, there's got to be somebody else who could come in and step and do this job. And so every hero wrestles with doubt. So when you start to feel feelings of doubt and fear in your homeschool, I want you to know that is completely normal. That's part of this process and part of this journey. No hero goes in and is like, oh yeah, I can bring this ring and I can fight off all these evil things and I'm gonna go, you know, put this in the fire where the evil dude is, no problem. Like Frodo doesn't say that in Lord of the Rings, right? He struggles and wrestles with the weight of the burden that he has to carry throughout this entire story. And in Pilgrim's Progress, Christian actually has a burden on his back, most of the story. So it is normal to resist. It's normal to have doubts. It's normal to question if the calling was even the right calling. And so I want you to not beat yourself up when you have those doubts and those fears, but to realize that that is part of the process. Then on the hero's journey, right when the hero was wrestling with all these doubts and all these questions and they want to give up, a mentor comes in. So in Lord of the Rings, you have Gandalf to guide Frodo on his journey. In Pilgrim's Progress, you have Faithful that comes along Christian side. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, you have Aslan and Harry Potter. He has Dumbledore. Like they have some sort of mentor who is wiser, usually older, <laughs> has lots of gray hair and some of these, these wizards, right? They're usually wiser, usually older, usually have walked this path, walked this journey before with other heroes, okay? And so in your homeschooling journey, if you're wrestling with these doubts and these fears and you're processing through on this journey, the hardship of it all. I want you to find a mentor. Um, it could be someone in your community who maybe is older or who has homeschooled longer. Um, you know, we are so blessed in today's age that we have the internet and you can find a mentor online. Uh, maybe someone who has like a group coaching program or a consultations or make friends in Facebook groups. But I encourage you to look for someone who's kind of further down the road than you are. It's great to have peers in your homeschooling journey, that is so key for your own um, sanity. <laughs> to have friends that you can share with and grow with, it's good to have someone who's maybe you know newer than even you are that you can encourage and help support and grow from helping them and teaching them. But it is so, 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 so key to have a mentor and someone who can encourage you and someone who can point you in the right direction when you get dissuaded and those fears kind of overwhelm you. So right when the hero, they have their mentor, they have the calling, they're embarking on their journey. What's one of the first things that happens to our poor little hero in the story? 
That's right. They have some sort of obstacle, some sort of hardship, right? This is what makes that hero's journey actually interesting. If it was like, um, I have to go put this ring in the fire and then the next chapter, oh, that was easy. I put the ring in the fire. Evil's over. I mean, there would be no story, right? Nobody would want to read that. That's not interesting. It's these struggles and these challenges and these obstacles that make the story interesting. And it's the same thing in your life, friends. We expect that we're not going to have hardships. We think if something's hard, that we're doing something wrong. And that's not the case. So expect that there are going to be obstacles. There are going to be hardships. Sometimes it's things that are happening outside of your homeschool. It could be life circumstances. You have to move. Your husband lost your job. You're sick. You have a parent who's aging. Like all these different things, all these different circumstances are obstacles. It could be within your homeschool, right? It could be one of your children has some sort of special learning disability or something that you're going to have to learn to work through and overcome in order to help them reach their full potential. It might be something within you, within your own body, within your own mind. Don't get discouraged because of the obstacles. The obstacles and the challenges are here as part of the journey. These are what God is gonna to use to grow you, to grow your family, to grow your children. And I, as parents, especially, we want to protect our kids from ever having to go through any obstacles because we love them so much and we don't wanna see them suffer. But if we try to overprotect them all the time and keep them from ever having to experience any challenges, they're not going to grow. It's these challenges that stretch us. So I want you to learn to embrace the obstacles. That doesn't mean you're going to be rosy and happy about it. Oh my gosh, that's so great. We have to move again this year. Wonderful. No, right? You can grieve. You can have your feelings. You can have your emotions. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is to give yourself grace and go, oh yeah, there's, there, there's going to be obstacles, but I can do this. Going back to the hero, right? Even Wonder Woman behind me here. The hero never at first believes they can overcome the obstacle. That's when that wrestling and that doubt and the fear comes in and they need their mentor to help them get through it. But as the hero starts to defeat enemy after enemy, after they start to get some wins and some progress, their confidence grows. They start to believe that they can do it. And it's the same thing with you. If you're trying to avoid the obstacles, avoid the hard feelings, avoid the challenges, you're not gonna stretch and grow. It's by facing them head on, by having the resolve to go, okay, we're going to get through this. And then when you do get through it, before the next obstacle comes, it helps to build your confidence. Oh, we got through that. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. What's the next, what's the next thing that's coming up here? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to work through that too. And it boosters your confidence. So don't be afraid of the obstacles. This is what is going to make you stronger. So our hero, he has a lot of obstacles. He has a lot of tests, right? to see if he really believes that this is what he's doing. He believes in the calling enough to keep going forward even when there are hardships. When it looks like all hope is lost, we get to the climax of our story. And in the hero's journey, there is a point where the hero is so injured or so discouraged that it looks like they're gonna quit. When they're so hurt that you're like, oh my gosh, are they gonna survive? I don't know. That, that, that battle is really bad. I don't think they're going to survive this one, right? That builds up the suspense and the interest in the story. And it's during that climax, either sent through some like major injury or some major trauma that the hero resurrects. And you're all sitting there on the edge of your seat. And in that minute, you see the hero coming over the hill and you're like, yes, they're still with us, right? The enemy didn't get them down. And they come back. And it's at that moment that the hero realizes who they really are. They realize that they've been the hero this whole time, that that was inside of them this whole time. And they go and they fulfill their calling. They win the battle. They defeat the white witch. They put the ring in the fire. They, you know, defeat the dark wizard, whatever it was, right? And we get to the end of our journey. We're like, well done. And it's the same thing with you. When we finally get to the end of ourselves, through either challenges or circumstances, and we realize we can't do it on our own anymore. That's when we can come back even stronger. We can come back in resurrection power and say, nope, this is the mission that I'm called to do here. I am coming back, I am not defeated. And so if you feel like you have been kicked down and 
blown over and beaten up this year, I want to encourage you, you don't have to stay there because oftentimes we forget who we are. The hero, most of the time at the beginning of the story has no idea, right? They're just living their little ordinary lives and usually their lives are really hard. And then they get this calling and as they have battle after battle after battle, they start to realize something special about themselves, something special about the calling, something special about the aid that they're getting. And it's the same thing with us because we often forget who we are. It reminds me of the scene in The Lion King. Remember The Lion King, right? Simba runs off into the woods and he's hanging out with the little warthog and the little meerkat dude and he's eating grasshoppers and he's playing around all day and meantime his family is suffering and the the monkey comes back or Fiki comes back to get Simba and bring him back to the pride and help him defeat the um, evil uncle help restore peace to the um, pride so again hero's journey here he hits Simba over the head with that little shaker thing and he says you have forgotten who you are and Simba's like, well, who am I? He's like, you're Mufasa's son. And then um, Simba goes up to the water and he's looking at his reflection and he doesn't see himself, does he? Who does he see? He sees his father. Today's episode is brought to you by A Gentle Feast. A Gentle Feast offers a complete living books curriculum, an award-winning early reading program, and more tools to equip you to apply Charlotte Mason's timeless philosophy into your modern homeschool. Go to agentlefeast.com to check it out. Smooth and easy days are closer than you think. And it's the same thing with us. We forgot who we are. You, my love, are a daughter of the King. The God that has the power to resurrect from the dead, the God that created the whole universe, created you, and if he called you to do this, he is certainly capable of giving you the strength and the courage and all the tools that you could possibly need. He loves your children more than you do. And so when you look in the mirror, I want you to remember whose you are, that you are God's beloved, that he just adores you. I love that verse, um, Zephaniah 317, where it says the Lord rejoices over us with singing. He's rejoicing over you. You are a hero who has been called on this journey and it's time for you to remember who you are. All right, here are some little practical things that I can think of that can also help with feeling like a hero in your homeschool. So research has shown that if you stand like a superhero, for two minutes every day. And I'll link to the study in the show notes. If you're like me, I like to like know all the research behind things. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll show you, but if you're just listening to the podcast, you're just gonna have to imagine me for a second, but it's what they call the superhero pose. So your feet are shoulder width apart. You're standing very strong. Your chest is up, your head is up. Your hands are on your hips, like a superhero, Superman, Wonder Woman, doesn't matter, right? They all kind of stand like this. They're proud, they're confident. They believe in the power that was within them to defeat the evil that's out there, right? And so studies have shown that standing like a superhero for two minutes raises your um, testosterone, which is like the strength. Yes, let's do this kind of hormone that men have, uh, more of than women. Um, So it helps raise your testosterone. It also lowers your cortisol. So you're less stressed. Okay. Now, do you want to stand like that in your homeschool? I don't know. It seems really silly, but if you just spend two minutes in front of the mirror in the morning before your kids wake up or before you start school, looking in the mirror and reminding yourself of whose you are, that you have been called on this journey, that you have every strength and power and tool because the divine teacher is always with you and reminding yourself of these truths. It will make such a huge difference. If you're feeling stressed during the day and you need a break, go in the bathroom and stand like that for two more minutes. Get your kids to stand like that. If they're having trouble solving a problem for math or having trouble coming up with the answer to a question, teach them to build that confidence within themselves too. 
remind yourself that you are the best person to be homeschooling your children, okay? Because God gave your children to you. You know them better than anybody else. So you're the expert on them. Be prepared, okay? A hero is prepared. They don't show up at battle being like, oh, like Wonder Woman's not like, where are my magic cufflings? Where's my golden lasso, right? <laughs> she has all of her tools and things ready to go. Being prepared will help you show up more confidently. I plan my week on Sunday nights. Um, I have a very simple process that I do it. I don't need any bells and frou-frous and special colored markers and wassy tape and some fancy journal. I use a 10 cent notebook from Walmart people, okay? So sometimes we need to keep things simple. We make things way too complicated and then we wonder why we don't do that. Keep it simple and then you actually do it. So on Sunday nights, I plan out my whole entire week. I plan out my week for school. I also plan out my week for our family and I write out all of that and I put it on the fridge. I just got these weekly template sheets from Amazon. I'll put those in the link too. And I fill it out and I meet with my kids. Now that they're all teenagers. You know, I have kids going a million different places. And so having us come together on Sunday evenings and kind of go, okay, well, here's the week. Oh, did, did someone forget? Do you have to stay after um, this activity? Do you have to do that thing? You know, it really helps us all get on the same page, literally, and be able to be strategic for a week rather than every day going, oh my goodness, what are we doing today? Oh, you have to go to this appointment but well, I have to be on this side of town for this. And, you know, that was just, it creates so much chaos that makes you feel discouraged and defeated. So when you have a plan, you can show up more confidently. So plan your week out on Sundays. It literally takes me 30 minutes every day. Review in the morning, what you have going on that one day. Do you have the pencils for this? Do you have the soap for the science experiment? Make sure you have those things so that you're ready and you feel prepared. Another way that you can feel like a hero in your homeschool is to get resourceful. So if you've ever watched the original Wonder Woman from the 70s, I love that one. <laughs> I know the picture behind me is the modern uh, Marvel one, but I love the 70s Wonder Woman because she did this iconic spin. So, you know, she was Diane, this like office secretary looking lady. But then when trouble would call or whatever, she would spin around and she would turn into Wonder Woman in her Wonder Woman outfit. Sometimes during our homeschool day, you just have to turn things around. So if you feel like everything's going south, if you're getting very frustrated and your kids are getting very frustrated and everybody's getting more frustrated, you could keep pushing, which I have tried to do many, many, many times, but let me tell you, it doesn't really work out. Usually that just makes everyone more, more frustrated, right? And then you just wanna give up and you collapse into your bed. Turn things around, take a time out, Maybe y'all need to go for a walk around the block. Maybe everybody just needs a snack. Maybe we're all just hungry here, people. Maybe you're gonna do your morning time under the table or out on the trampoline. Be creative when we feel like we don't have to do this, all this pressure to make our homeschool look and feel a certain way. We can be more creative. We can laugh and play. And that's the other thing about Wonder Woman. Like one of my favorite episodes is where she learns how to skateboard. I mean, how cool is that? Don't worry. You don't need to learn how to skateboard. I don't skateboard either. But I was just like, oh my goodness, one woman's so cool. She's skateboarding and she had like a helmet and pads on and all this stuff. Sometimes we just have to learn to play again. Learn to tell jokes. Learn to do something that's funny with your kids. Maybe y'all just need to go out and skateboard. <laughs> learn to do things that you think are fun. Add them into your homeschool day. Let your children see more and more of who you are. When they see you having a good time, being happy, being excited about what you're doing, feeling confident and energized, then they start to show up that way too. When you're showing up and you're not showing up as a hero and you've forgotten who you are and you're fearful and you're doubting and you're discouraged and you're like, oh my goodness, are we gonna battle about whether or not you have to actually do your copy work again? and you show up with this defeated, discouraged attitude, even if you don't say anything, even if it's just in your body language, your children will pick up on that and they will start to feel defeated and discouraged and I can't do anything right and I can't keep up and I don't know what she's expecting and every day is a battle and they'll start to think that too. So you need to change your thinking about how you show up in your homeschool and that will drastically change the atmosphere. When you show up as a hero, 
you have confidence. So let's stand like a superhero again, right? You show up confidently. When your child is resisting X, Y, Z, you don't take it personally. You know that that's them struggling with something and learning's hard and we all have our moods and we all have our days and it has nothing to do with me. And you can allow them to have grace. You can be confident and be like, hey, okay, let's go try something else. Or, oh, nope, you actually really need to do that assignment right now. And you have, oh, I'm gonna set the timer here. You have 10 minutes to do it. Let's see how far you can get. You can show up confidently. You can be resourceful. You'll be more creative. You'll be able to show them more grace. When you realize that you're on your own hero's journey, and here's the thing, your kids are on their own too. That means that they're going to have to struggle with some things. You're going to have to let them struggle sometimes with a hard book. You're going to have to let them, you know, oh, well, you, you kind of goofed off during the 20 minutes that I gave you to do your history lesson. So, um, you know, you're going to have to finish that instead of playing outside with the neighbor today. Sometimes you have to do those hard things. And sometimes they have to experience those hard things because they're on their own journey too. You know who you are in your kid's homeschool journey? Yeah, you're the wizard, right? You're the mentor. You're the guide. You're the person who gets the privilege of coming alongside of them. And when they're doubting themselves, you're the one who gets to be their cheerleader. When they're afraid, you're the one who gets to show them how to show up confidently because you've realized that you're the hero of your life in your journey. And you have the amazing privilege to guide them on theirs. It's not your job to fix everything for them. It's not to make sure there's no potholes that they're gonna stumble and trip and fall into. Your job is to be there, to talk them through it, to guide them through it, to keep them going on their journey. And as you're providing, this educational experience for them to see yourself as a mentor and a coach is such an important mindset. You're not the person prodding them along, pulling them along. You're not the dictator. You're not the enforcer. You're the guide. And showing up as the guide, oh, that feels so much less pressure, doesn't it? And so, I hope that this episode has been encouraging to you. Go get your cape on, moms. And remember that you are the hero that your homeschool needs. Thanks for listening. Hey there, Julie Ross here. I just wanted to say thank you for listening to today's episode. If you like this show, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a positive review in iTunes. This really does help people learn about the podcast. And each month, I will pick a winner to receive a free gift. Don't forget to check out all the free resources we created for you at thefeastlife.me. Thank you. Thank you.